Hi, I'm Prof Al. Welcome to Chemistry Matters, and today we are going to be talking about isomers. A very, very important part of organic chemistry. I seem to be introducing all of these videos as being about uh, very important parts of organic chemistry, which probably says that it's all important stuff, and I guess you should probably pay attention to it. Okay, um, before we start, um, just a little something. A few people mentioned in the comments, um, what is the textbook that you are using for all of this? Uh, this is the textbook um, that I'm using. This is by Blackman, Bottle, Schmidt, Mosserino and Villa. Um, very snappily titled Chemistry, 5th edition, and this is published by John Wiley and Sons Australia. Um, so if you want to pick up a copy of this, there is obviously an ebook version as well. Um, I'd like to think that it's a pretty well written piece of work. Okay. Right, so um, isomers. Now before we get into isomers, we're just going to pick up on one example that we didn't get done in the last video, and that is all to do with nomenclature. We've talked exclusively about carbon forming chains, and you look for the longest carbon chain when you're naming things. But what happens if you've got atoms in a ring, carbon atoms in a ring? So, for example, this molecule here. Okay. That's our line structure. It's a whole bunch of CH2 units bonded together to make a six-membered ring. So you've got six carbons in that ring. What do you call that? Okay, so the longest carbon chain, obviously, even though it's a ring, is six. So therefore, it's hex. Do we have any uh, unsaturation, multiple bonds in the longest carbon chain? No, we don't. Do we have a functional group? No, we don't. It's obviously not called hexane because that would be the linear version. When they're in a ring, we call them cyclo. So this molecule would be called cyclohexane. In other words, six carbons in a ring, no functional groups, no multiple bonds. Okay, straightforward. What would happen if we did that? Okay. So in this case, we've got still the longest carbon chain being six. Uh, they're still in a ring. The only difference now is that we have got a double bond, don't we? Okay, so we've got unsaturation in the longest carbon chain. So we would put an E in as our infix. No functional groups. Cyclohexene, okay? And very quickly to finish, this is a kind of a, an interesting one. Um, so what do you call this particular molecule? So how do we number things? So in this case, <laughs> we number things so as to give our quote unquote functional group. Remember the lowest possible number. And that's the alkene. So the alkene in this case we number like so, one, two, three. So in this case, it's still cyclo, it's still hexene. Where do we have the ene though? That's the question. So uh, in this case, hex one ene, and the substituent is at three. So three methyl, cyclohex one -ene. Okay, so that one you might not have thought that that's the correct name, but it absolutely is. Um, when it comes to numbering, you start off again by giving uh, those carbons the lowest possible number and ensuring that the substituent has got the lowest possible number. Of course, you could potentially have numbered it this way, couldn't you? and called it 6-methylcyclohex1-ene. No, it's not that. It's 3-methylcyclohex1-ene. Okay? Right. So isomers, 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 isomers. 
Where to begin? Okay. Um, ISO. ISO means the same. And forgive me, if I've forgotten whether it's Greek or Roman, but it means the same. Okay. Um, so isomers are molecules that essentially have got the same chemical formula, but they've got different chemical structures somehow. Okay. Um, so generally that involves different sorts of arrangements of atoms. Okay. That's generally what leads to isomers. Now we've struck isomers before, okay, already in this course. Now we started off by saying, okay, let's look at alkanes. The simplest possible alkanes that we have are ones with one carbon, remember CH4, okay? Ones with two carbons, which would be C2H6, the one with three carbons, C3H8. Now, there's no ambiguity in those structures at all. We can only write a single chemically sensible structure for each of those. So for CH4, it would be that, where you've got hydrogens marked there. C2H6 would be that. C3H8 would be that, where those hydrogens there are uh, implicit, hopefully, okay? But when we go to C4H10, and we've already seen this, when we go to C4H10, there's two ways that we can do this, okay? We can go CCCC, have a four carbon chain, or we can go CCC with a three carbon chain, like that, okay? So this is unambiguous. This is unambiguous, this is unambiguous, this is ambiguous because we can have that or we can have that, okay? So is this important? Yes, it is. Absolutely it is. It's incredibly important. Now, these two molecules have got the same chemical formula, okay? C4H10 but they have got different ways in which the atoms are arranged. In this one here, the carbon atoms form a chain. In this one here, we've sort of got a branched chain. Okay, we've got the central carbon atom here and that's got three carbons radiating off it essentially. So that gives these two molecules very, very different uh, physical properties and indeed chemical properties as well, okay? so. These are going to have different boiling points. They're going to have different freezing points. They're going to have different densities, different refractive indices, all of these sorts of things, all of these physical properties. And chemically, they're not going to behave the same either. Okay? So even though they've got the same chemical formula, we need to take account of the fact that they are physically and chemically different molecules. In other words, they are isomers. Isomers which had the same chemical formula, but different uh, properties, okay? Different, different structures, obviously different structures, okay? So the first alkane for which we hit, or the first alkane formula for which we hit isomers is C4H10, okay? Like so. What then happens if we go to uh, C5H12? And again, you might be seeing, excuse me, you might be seeing a pattern here, C5H12. Um, our formula, CH4, C2H6, C3H8, C4H10, C5H12, CNH2N plus 2. And that is the general formula for an alkane. Remember, a molecule made up of only carbon and hydrogen with no multiple bonding and no rings. That's important as well, okay? C5H12, how can we draw that? How many isomers are we going to have of that, okay? So first of all, let's draw the one that's got a five carbon chain, okay? Like that, one, two, three, four, five. Now, is there any way that we can write this molecule uh, some other way so that it's got a five carbon chain? And the answer is no, there's not. 
Okay, so let's then go down to a four carbon chain. So bam, 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 like that. And let's have a substituent now to make up that fifth carbon. So let's put a substituent there. Okay, does that work? Is the formula of this still C5H12? There's three hydrogens, five, six, and three is nine, and three is 12, yes. Okay, so that's C5H12. Is there any other way that we could do a four carbon chain with one substituent? Let's see. How about if we put the substituent there? Yes, no. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that this is exactly the same as this. Okay, you just flip this over like so, you get that molecule. So it doesn't matter whether you put the substituent there or there, you get the same thing. So there's only one way of uh, putting a substituent on a four carbon chain. Okay, what about a three carbon chain then? Um, like so. And then we can put a substituent there and we can put a substituent there. Okay, is that still C5H12? Well, we've got three, six, nine, 12 hydrogens, five carbons. That is another isomer of C5H12, okay? So these molecules, again, they all have the chemical formula C5H12. This one, this one, this one, all the same, but they're all different molecules, as evidenced by the fact that they all have different names. If you went through and named these, you would name this pentane, pentane. You would name this one, two, three, four. You would name this two methyl butane. And this one here, longest carbon chain of three, you would call this two, two dimethyl propane. So the fact that they're given different names certainly emphasizes the fact that they are different molecules. They are different chemically and they are different physically. Okay? And they are isomers. So with C4H10, C5H12, we've shown the existence of isomers. These types of isomers are called constitutional isomers. And essentially what they are are molecules that have got a different way of attaching all of the atoms in the molecule. Okay, In this case, we attach the carbon atoms together so that you make a five carbon chain. Here, you attach them so you make a four carbon chain. Here three carbon chain, okay? So obviously different orders of attachment of atoms. So that's what makes a constitutional isomer. As we're gonna see, there are quite a few different types of isomers. Okay, so we've done CH4, C2H6, C3H8, C4H10, C5H12. We could keep going, but we're not going to, okay? Um, we could go to uh, C6H, uh, 2n plus 2 is 14, so that would be hexane. And we would find that there are five possible constitutional isomers for that. If we went to seven carbons, so C7H16, there are nine possible constitutional isomers. If we went to 25 carbons, how many constitutional isomers do you reckon there'd be? In other words, how many different ways of putting together 25 carbons and, in this case, 52 hydrogens? Um, around about roughly 36 million, 36 million different constitutional isomers of C25H52. And if that doesn't make you go, wow, then not a lot will. Okay. So, constitutional isomerism, a very, very important part of uh, chemistry, certainly of organic chemistry, okay. Um... What are other examples of constitutional isomers? Do we only get them when we have carbons and hydrogens by itself in the molecule? No, we don't. For example, this, okay, one, two, three, okay, so that would be propan-1-ol, and this would be propan-2-ol. They are constitutional isomers as well, even though they contain oxygens. Different orders of attachment of atoms, okay? Here you've got a three carbon chain, but the OH is attached to the terminal carbon. Here you've got a three carbon chain, but the OH is attached to a, or to the middle carbon in this case. So again, these two 
despite having the same functional group, they both have alcohol functional groups, uh, they're going to behave differently. They are completely different molecules, different boiling point, different freezing point, et cetera, et cetera. Different physical properties, different chemical properties, as befits constitutional isomers. Okay, that is our first foray into the world of isomerism. Believe me that there is a lot more to come. Um, so stay tuned, I guess. No flipping. And um, we will see you in the next video.